So to start my discussion tonight, I'd like to ask you all to think about a problem that you face as educators or a problem that our students face in the education system. Whatever comes to mind first, just think about that for a moment. One potential issue I might expect a lot of people to think of here is that our class sizes are too big. As teachers, I'm sure a lot of us can agree on that issue. We experience every day just how dividing our time between so many students leaves many of them without the full support that they need. But what about people who aren't teachers? I find that whenever I say to one of my non-teacher friends that my class sizes are too big, it doesn't really register to them. But if I tell them that each of my classes has 34 students in it, I see their eyes go wide open as they try to picture themselves helping, supporting, and monitoring that many students at once. Once they can picture the scenario, the difficulty of it really starts to hit home. If you try to think about this from the student perspective, you might have thought about how our students are spending too much time on homework. Imagine if you try to tell that to somebody who hasn't been a student in a long time. Chances are they would probably just agree with you and move on without giving it too much thought. But if you told them that on average, our high schoolers are spending three and a half hours a night on homework, they would probably do a double take. Once they do some mental math and realize how little time that would leave them for eating dinner, relaxing, or even sleeping in addition to their work day, and they recognize it's an actual problem. We know that these things are issues, but sometimes they get pushed to the back of our minds because we don't know the severity of the issue without the context of a value to help us picture what's happening. And without that context, there's little immediate motivation for us to take action. Those numerical values have the strength to get people to start thinking about an issue more deeply. My inspiration for wanting to talk about the strength in numbers and giving perspective to things comes from a common type of problem I do with my AP physics students, which we call numberless problems. And to show you what I mean by that, I thought we could look at a quick example. Mr. Pa and his best friend, Darth Vader, are having a race. And yes, I do put myself into pretty much all the questions that I write for my class. On the left, numerical values are given for both runners' speeds as well as the distance. And the question asks the students to calculate how much time it takes each runner to finish and to compare the two. On the right, those numerical values are replaced with variables. And the students are supposed to compare or are supposed to determine the amount of time it takes Darth Vader to finish in terms of the time it takes me to finish. When I first gave these problems to my AP students, most were able to solve the one on the left, but the one on the right, that caused me to get met with a room full of blank stares. And you can imagine how frustrated the students felt when I told them that despite their struggles, these two problems are exactly the same. They both use the same equation and they both use the same steps to solve the problem. Not only do my students struggle with these, but they absolutely hate these kinds of problems. In the survey I sent out to them at the end of the first marking period, I asked them if there was anything I could do to help relieve their stress related to physics class. And one of the most common answers that I got was some variation of them begging me for fewer numberless problems. One student in particular even told me that numberless problems were the bane of his existence. And putting aside the fact that these types of questions do appear on the AP exam, I'd still like my students to be able to utilize these equations that we've learned about and to understand these concepts without the need for those numerical values. So why can a student solve an equation when they're plugging in numbers, but they can't solve the same equation when we use variables to represent those values? Think about what happened in your mind when you first read these two problems. Although they're essentially the same, one might've been more straightforward for you to visualize. It just seems easier to picture Mr. Paul running at three meters per second compared to a speed of VP. Both are probably a little bit easier for you to think about than to ask yourself why I'm running a race against Darth Vader in the first place or why we're best friends, but that's besides the point. While the two problems can both be solved the same way, a speed of three meters per second is more concrete to us when we hear it. A speed of VP doesn't represent anything specific. And we depend on numerical values to give us context so frequently in our lives that without that context, our brains can sometimes struggle to put things in perspective. We can see this in a lot if we look at our students and what, what uh, they're thinking about all the time. My least favorite example is the emphasis that they place on their grades. Who got the high score on the last test? How many questions or how many problems was this question worth? And the ever popular, hey, Mr. Pa, what can I do for some extra credits? Add on to that their uh, emphasis on who's got the most Instagram followers or how many goals did they score in the last soccer season? How much money do they need to save to buy that awesome thing they want? Numbers are everywhere. 
and they give added perspective that makes things seem more relevant or mean more. This reliance on numbers is so strong that one of the best strategies I have of helping my students with these kinds of problems is to replace variables in these problems with numbers and solve the problems with those, and then replace the numbers back with variables and solve it again. And our natural dependence on numbers is so strong that it takes multiple problems using this strategy just to help improve their confidence a little bit. At first, I couldn't really understand why these numberless problems were such a challenge for my students. For me, with my background in physics, I have the experience to understand position, uh, velocity, acceleration, without any need for numerical values to help me picture what's happening. Because of my experience, I don't need that added perspective anymore, but the students are still new to these concepts and they struggle to make those same connections without something more concrete. As the year progresses and with a lot of practice, it does eventually get easier for them, but not without a good deal of experience. And I think that experience is the key to understanding these things without numerical values. You don't have to tell students how much time they spend on homework each night for them to know that it's too much. And as teachers, we don't need to hear the number 34 to know that our class sizes are too big. But if we wanna convince others that there's an issue that needs fixing, simply saying that our class sizes are too big without that added perspective isn't going to convey our message to someone who doesn't have the experience to understand it otherwise. There are many issues that teachers and students deal with that we understand all too well based on our own personal struggles. And the example that I would give is one based on my own lived experience. You might know that LGBTQ students experience depression and under other mental health issues more frequently than other students and that they feel less safe and supported in their classrooms. Let me add some perspective on that with some numbers. According to a study by the Human Rights Campaign, 77% of LGBTQ students surveyed reported feeling depressed or down in the week leading up to the survey. Only 26% felt that they were always safe in their classrooms. And just 5% said that all of their teachers were supportive of LGBTQ students. That 5% one hit me particularly hard when I read it. And it made me really think about my own classroom environment I'm creating for my students. I had always felt that my students knew I supported LGBTQ students because I had never expressed any ideas to suggest otherwise. I mean, at the start of every year, I always include the classic line about how we respect everybody here, but do my LGBTQ students explicitly know that they're included in that statement? I think back to my own experience from when I was in high school. As someone who barely understood my own identity as a queer person, and dealt with some of those same issues, I can only imagine the impact that knowing that all of my teachers would have supported me could have had. While you might have already known that LGBTQ students have these struggles, seeing these percentages gives you the context that you need to understand how serious it is if you haven't had that experience for yourself. If you're wondering what you can do with that perspective, the first thing I would say is to be more explicit about your support for various underrepresented groups of students, including LGBTQ students. Don't just assume that they think you mean them when you say you support everybody, make it explicit. The other thing you can do is spread the word. And I guess spread the numbers is probably a better phrase in this case. Once people hear those statistics enough, they might just be able to understand how much our LGBTQ students need our support. The continuous exposure of those values increasing understanding of the issue is not too dissimilar to how students need repeated practice before becoming comfortable with the numberless problems. That process can be a challenge, but once they get enough experience, the results are definitely worth it in the end. Once they see that it takes Darth Vader half as much time to complete the race, they can start to understand that doubling the velocity causes the time to be halved. And that demonstrates a more fund fundamental understanding of that equation. Hopefully seeing that Vader is twice as fast doesn't also make them realize the dark side of the force is more powerful though, because engaging in a lightsaber duel with a student is definitely not something that's assessed on the Danielson rubric. When students understand the equations without the need for numerical values, they demonstrate how well they understand the basics of those concepts, and they can start thinking about more complex scenarios. They can also use their skills of interpreting equations without numbers to help them understand new equations they encounter in the future in topics that they aren't as familiar with. There definitely is strength in numbers, but to comprehend something more deeply requires us to be able to use those numbers to familiarize ourselves with the fundamentals of what's going on. And that's part of a journey to a more complete understanding. It may not always be easy to do, but the more you immerse yourself in something and the more time you dedicate to understanding a scenario, the easier it gets. Thank you.